Now in the previous video, you lot saw me start adding OSB boards to the walls of the tiny house. And when it comes to doing that task, there's only one thing you really need to remember, and that is to stagger the boards. You need to ensure that it's in a brick fashion, meaning that the rows of the boards aren't all in line because that can cause a bit of a weakness in the structure. To make a strong structure, you need to stagger the boards. And of course, I only remembered this as soon as I'd put the last OSB board on the wall. So that entire wall is now wrong, which is not particularly brilliant. It's not the end of the world. Well, it kind of is. There's definitely worse things I could have done, but yeah, just don't copy how I did that wall. Just ensure that you stagger them. And I just need to try and remember to stagger the boards on every other wall. And what I'm also thinking of doing is just completely going across the windows and the doors with the OSB board and then using the router to cut out just around the windows and doors because I really liked how that worked when I was doing the skylights. It's actually a really accurate way of cutting because you're using the studs as a template. Now something else that's a little bit unique about this tiny house is, well, I'm basically making every task more difficult than it needs to be. For example, normally you would kind of do a, a roof structure with a bit of an overhang, guttering, the lot, soft fit fascia, all of that stuff. But for this tiny house, I don't really want to have that look. So I'm gonna be having no overhang. What I'm trying to do is have the cladding system go up past the roof a little bit so it all looks perfectly flush. Now with that, I don't really know what I'm doing. I'm just gonna figure it all out when I get to that sort of stage. I've got a little bit of an idea for the detail that I wanna do, but as I always stress to you lot, when it comes to renovating your flat, house, whatever, building a new build, you do have to figure all this stuff out before you start building because the knock-on effects of XYZ to then XYZ, it can create really big issues if you don't plan and you don't think things through. But I would really like to stress to you the saying of cross the bridge when you get to it because you can start getting stressed and worried about things that you don't need to worry about right now you've got a load of other things that needs your attention immediately and i found that's what really helps me feel somewhat calm when i'm doing a project is right now all i really care about is the osb and then thinking about the floor and the detail for the floor and the insulation because they're the next two steps and as I always say just trust yourself to be able to figure stuff out because you yourself right now, you've survived every single day of your life. So you're doing a pretty good job of every single challenge that you've had in your life. That kind of gives you confidence to be like, oh yeah, I can just figure out anything. I don't know what is going on at the moment, but I'm pretty much doing everything wrong. As you can see up there, that vapor control layer, I've tucked in behind the OSB, which obviously means that if there's any moisture in the roof, that water's then going to now enter the tiny house. And when all of this area here has got rock wall or whatever insulation, I chuck in there. If there is any moisture coming from the roof, it will then drip down into the insulation and then that will eventually soak through into the plasterboard. So. Yes, that work that I've just done there, I am now going to have to undo because I am an idiot. Now on the topic of me making things more difficult for myself, I've had an idea again, because I really liked the ensuite layout, and then I started thinking, how can I make this tiny house feel even more special? Because as I say, if you're gonna do something different in life, you've got to make it feel special, because otherwise there's certain negatives going on. Now obviously living in a tiny house, it's quite a small space. That can create some difficulties, because your house could quite quickly become cluttered with a load of stuff. And I can remember living in my studio apartment in London, and by the time you've done your washing and you got a clothes horse out and you walk into the kitchen and you knock the clothes horse over because there's not enough space in the hallway, it starts to annoy you. And that's the one thing that I don't want with this tiny house is I want it all to be thought out and planned super well, which is meaning that I am somewhat overthinking everything. And with regards to making it feel really special, I've had an idea to replace the shower tray with a lowered custom made bath that you then step down into, which when it's empty, it kind of just looks like a lowered shower tray. And then 
there's going to be a tap somewhere which I can then fill that entire area with water and it's going to become a bath. Now the only issue with this is I'm going to have to undo some of my work because in order to put a 48 centimeter deep bath I'm going to need to remove a floor joist and lower the ground and lowering the ground means that the bath is actually going to go into the ground which would cause all kinds of problems during winter because the cold water freezing expansion pipes cracking frost on tiles custom made bath it all sounds really bad but the vision that i've got in my head is if i can put swimming pool lights in the side of the bath and then the entire bath area becomes flooded it's going to look sort of like an endless hot tub type thing I'll chuck some photos on the screen now of some of the ideas that I've got in my head. It doesn't make sense. I don't really want to have a bath. I just think the option of having a bath and the look and it's just something that you don't see very often. It will make the tiny house feel even more luxurious and special. And that is the whole thing that I wanted. And realistically, this is actually going to cost me actually not very much money to do. All it will really cost is a few more tiles a little bit of insulation to make sure that the bath is all secure and like I was saying with frost and whatnot that it's all good. It's going to mean that to get the grey water from the bath that's going to be difficult because I'm probably going to be a little bit lower than the drain point. So for sure there's challenges. I think what's annoying is I really like the idea of having a flush shower tray so it all looks perfect like a wet room style shower but I do think for me personally, if I can flood the entire area and then you got swimming pool lights in it and then at night time, I just think that would look insane. So who cares? I'm just going to send it, do it, just like my skylight windows. Now, the amount of people who have messaged me who are developers being like, Chris, I don't actually get why we don't do that in England. Why are we not putting skylights as windows? Because half the time it will end up being cheaper than the particular aluminium casement windows that most developers are putting in high rise buildings. If you're worried about the waterproofness of these windows, well, they're skylights, they go on your roof. So they are watertight. If you're worried about heat loss, where you can get double glazed, triple glazed, quadruple glazed if you wanted, and the look of them, when they're fitted i think it's going to be really special now obviously the first thing that comes to mind is how do they not fall out when they're vertically put in that is the challenge but the thing is is when you've got some sort of lap sealant silicon underneath a skylight there is no way i could ever lift a skylight out of the upstands because there is such a large glass to silicon surface area that it's just impossible for me to unstick it. I really do believe the skylight would just sit and then the sort of vacuum effect that happens with silicon and glass, I just don't see it going anywhere, especially if I'm applying pressure. Then once that's set, it's gonna be solid. Now, another idea I had is I could possibly use some sort of gluing of a metal bracket to the glass reveal underside, just as a precautionary thing. I've also been getting quite a few questions, so I thought I'd go through some of them. One of them that I've seen a few times is how many days a week am I working on the tiny house? And basically every single video that you see is half a day working on the tiny house. That's how it's working out as pretty much. Maybe not for say two videos, maybe that's two half days, but I would say, yeah, 90% of the videos is a half day working on the tiny house, which means that I've made say 30 videos so far. So that's two weeks if you're working flat out and you had everything on site. So I truly believe you could start to finish, build this entire thing in two months if I was just flat out working on this tiny house, but I'm not. This project is genuinely my most enjoyable project ever because it's the first one where I don't have crippling interest rates shouting at me. I'm not working on the project from 7 p.m. when I finish my day job to one in the morning like it was on the London project. Honestly, that London project was the worst thing I have ever done. But it was also the best thing because my bank account definitely looks a lot better now since that. But that project was seven months, start of renovation to the end of the renovation. And it was a legit renovation. That was going from 130 square meters to 200 square meters, two loft conversions. The biggest possible side return extension, redoing every single wall in the house, seven months whilst having full on day jobs. So next time you start whinging and complaining about, oh, I don't have time, find it. Do you think all the people watching this video who are currently renovating their bungalow or flat, do you think they just have more time than you? 
Or are they making certain sacrifices? They're not going to the pub. They're not watching football. Oh, but I don't have the money to renovate my place. Well, stop smoking, stop drinking, stop spending money on the lottery. Do you know what? I once overheard a fund manager say this. He goes, the lottery is a tax on the ignorant and the people with no ambition. And ever since he said that, I probably think about that statement once a week because pretty much everybody I know enters the lottery. I don't because, well, I don't spend any money on anything, as you lot know. But I did really think about that because if most people are spending, say, however much a week on the lottery, if they'd invested that in some tracker fund, they probably by now could have made quite a lot of money if they were just, instead of gambling on a lottery ticket, they were gambling in the stock market, which is all that finance is, by the way. It is just educated gambling. Everybody knows this, but a lot of people who work in finance are so full of BS that they, well, they deceive themselves. They deceive everyone in the world. I've been asked quite a lot about money talk, which I used to do on Instagram stories quite a lot just talking about all things money, saving, investing, property. I've been looking recently at investing some money in some just normal fixed rate ISAs because the interest rates are pretty mad at the moment. You can get, if you're locking money up for say two years, you can get 6.1% returns annually. And remember, HMOs, buy to lets, kind of aim for most people in that space. They're looking for seven to 8% returns. And now you can get 6.1% for doing nothing, just chucking it in a fixed rate ISA. And these ISAs you can put up to 8 million in. If you're putting 8 million in at 6.1%, you're getting £480,000 a year for doing nothing. Now, of course, we all have 8 million that we can just chuck into an ISA. But how sick would that be if you could earn that amount of money for literally doing nothing? Now, I think I will invest in some of these ISAs because I think it's a pretty good opportunity now to get locked in for maybe a year or two at, like I said, 6.1% if you're taking the interest earned annually. If you're taking the interest monthly, I think I can remember it being around 5.8% monthly, meaning if you invested, say, 85 grand, I think I worked that out as being something like 400 quid a month just straight into your bank account. So it's sort of like a little bit of a salary. And always remember, you're only protected by the financial service compensation scheme by like 85 grand i think that is the limit on that so if the bank went bust you can get back 85 grand i'm pretty sure that's how much it is i mean i worked in finance for quite a few years but i mean i failed my regulation exam like two times in a row honestly i actually wasn't actually meant to work in finance because i did my ioc investment operations certificate and then every single time my manager was like okay chris now you've got to do the imc which is an investment management certificate which you need if you work front office i'm pretty sure but every time my manager just brought it up to me i was like oh yeah, yeah i'll do it in a few months that few months was like seven years so people don't care really and then everyone's like oh chris are you going to do cfa which by the way for any person who's high up in finance as in they're not some little grad rat nobody cares about cfa i was talking to somebody who well, works in finance, earns more than footballers. And he was saying that whenever they see CFA on a CV, they just think this person will not be able to impress me on their own merit. They need to have a qualification to impress me, which I think is a very interesting way of looking at school and degrees. Because I've got no degree. Most of my friends have got no degrees. There's definitely certain degrees that you need to get into certain jobs. But Honestly, whenever I meet someone and they're like, oh yeah, I'm studying history mixed with French, you're like, what is that gonna do for you, bruv? You're just getting into debt for nothing. The amount it costs to go to university for the earning potential when being a grad, like that's the other thing I didn't get. Why would you go to university to get into finance when you could do an apprenticeship scheme for 12 to 18 months and then be on the same money as a grad coming in, but that grad has got X amount of debt at university they got no experience whilst the apprentice has been gaining experience. It takes three, four years if you've done a master's to finish the degree in economics or whatever to then get into finance versus the apprentice who did it in 12 to 18 months. I don't really understand how the world works. People really confuse me. I don't understand why some people see things so perfectly clear and others, they're just deceiving themselves. Oh, I've got no money. Yet yeah, they smoke and drink, enter the lottery, and are paying 11% interest on a car payment. I don't get it. Why would you do that? Just buy an 800 quid Golf and then just keep driving that car till you're a millionaire. Most wealthy people that I know are extremely stealth wealth, meaning you will never ever know that they're a multi-millionaire because they drive a 1500 quid car. 
So yes, a reminder to you watching this right now, no matter what you're up to, you work in a plastic injection molding factory, you earn 950 a month, you have a vision in your brain of something that will never leave your brain for the rest of your life until you achieve it because it's just what you want. You know it deep down. As I always say, if you wanna open a bakery in the south of France, 100% you can do it. You just need to make a plan and then stick to it for a very, very long time. And that is where people fail massively is they do not give things enough time if you think about the amount of time you've dedicated to netflix and watching tv how does that compare to the amount of time you spent trying to start x business or do whatever it is to create your dream life but, but you don't understand i'm so tired when i get back from work it's so difficult yeah buddy that's why nobody achieves these things do you think i wasn't tired when i spent every waking moment outside of my day job growing my business do you not do you not think that I had that? What about every other person who's watching this who is achieving their dream life? Do you think they had it easier than you? Right, everybody else has it easy. You have it hard. Yep, well done. Go look deep into your own eyes and just think, I am only deceiving myself because nobody else cares. It's only affecting you, the BS that you tell yourself. And eventually you're gonna to get to a limit of how many times you can feel sorry for yourself before you start doing something about it. There's only so many times you can chat the same story. You can hang around the same group of friends where you get away with saying the same BS. The only reason I make these videos is to help the 1% of people who are actually gonna go and do this stuff. Because the majority of people, they're just not going to. And the thing is, is you can watch this, me building a tiny house and think, oh, I'm gonna do that debt-free living. You have to backtrack this. The DIY knowledge of how to build all of this stuff is incredibly important. But what's more important is that I could not be doing this if 10 years ago I didn't decide, oh, I'm gonna escape the nine to five, I'm gonna create my own business. You just got to start doing something and then the knock-on effects of things are crazy. Do you know that the first side hustle that taught me so much was I used to go to the local dump and people would throw away fish tanks, but the workers at the dump decided that actually it's a bit wasteful to just chuck away perfectly working fish tanks. So they'd leave them on the side and they'd sell them. So I would go there and I would get these fish tanks for five quid. Now, if you know anything about fish tanks, you've got two different types. You've got tropical fish tanks, then you've got marine fish tanks, which are salt water. Salt water have a load of different elements in the water which creates coralline algae and that can make fish tanks look really bad to some people so they would then chuck these fish tanks away at the tip i would buy them for five quid take a razor blade remove all of that coralline algae respray the fish tank cabinet so instead of it being some fake wood veneer pattern i'd spray paint it various different modern colors that would actually look nice in a modern house i would then put it on ebay and sell them for 400 to 500 quid and this is the thing that I started to realize is almost everything is buying something with potential that nobody else sees. And usually people can see it. They have the vision of what something could look like, but their laziness gets in the way of it. And if you can just work past the laziness, that is where the profit lies. And I do want to just say this. The reason I always go on about money is it goes hand in hand with almost everything in life. You want to spend more time with people you care about money's the answer to that. You wanna go travel, money's a part of that. You wanna feel not stressed, get some money in your pocket. Now, obviously you need to create money by, as I was saying, adding value to certain things, selling it, creating a business, a gap in the market that no one else is seeing, or you mimic other businesses, but you offer something in a slightly different way. I mean, there's enough money in the world to go around. Truly there is, but that money is not gonna be found working in a nine to five. I, this is just my personal opinion. I think there's amazing jobs that people do in the world. And obviously I'm talking to the 1% of the people who want to go and create a business and they wanna escape, they wanna have freedom. I know loads of people who have day jobs that they love, so I'm not talking to those people I'm talking to the people who are like me and I fully can admit I'm weird I'm the alien I used to think everyone else was odd around me I couldn't understand why people would want to go to the pub when they could work on a business start creating money leave their day job have location freedom financial freedom therefore having time freedom and then if they I don't know want to build a tiny house in their free time and that's what they enjoy doing they just do that I always felt like the outlier in every single situation now I've got a great circle of people around me but I can remember being at school being like I'm not interested in anything 
that everyone else is interested in. Everyone's talking about going to university and I can't think of anything worse. I just want to start making money so I can get out and start living my dream life, which unbelievably, and I still can't quite believe that I've actually left my day job now and I'm actually sticking to my plan. I'm building this tiny house, that's happening. I'm looking to buy a house in France and then I still kind of do want to buy something in the Alps somewhere. And that's really the reason I made this channel is I want to kind of share some of the things I've learned about DIY because that might help some people who want to add some value to their house and then seeing me do everything myself makes them go, oh, maybe I could do that. So that's one of the reasons. The other thing is there's a bigger plan in place which is well i'll just tell you i want to have the tiny house completely finished that'd be amazing i want to have a cheap place in switzerland somewhere where it snows and then i want to buy somewhere down in the south of france for 15 20 grand and because i can make money from anywhere in the world and by the way this is my good few year plan this is not something that i'm going to be doing just tomorrow and these are my like forever houses now and i really want to be able to spend four months in winter in the snow then come back to England for four months and then spend another four months in the south of France. That is sort of the dream that I've always had. And then obviously there's definitely a Lamborghini involved in that, but I just cannot afford the insurance because Ventador SVJ 35,000, the insurance on that would be, which is disgusting. The dream is to just basically commute from each one, work whilst I'm out there. Now that I own my own business, I've got no constraints to anything. And also if you do what you truly enjoy doing. You don't ever really see it as being work because you would do it for no money. The fact that you earn money from your business just makes it even more enjoyable. And also you've got an unlimited upside because when you're self-employed, if you put more effort in, you get direct returns of that. Meaning if you increase the income of the business and the profit, you get to keep that money. In comparison to if you work for some corporate business where you have a salary and you know exactly how much you make each month. And if you get in early, stay late, work harder than all of your colleagues, well, what do you really have to show for it? And then if one day you get a promotion, you start earning a hell of a lot more money, well, then you're taxed to pieces and you're definitely gonna start looking at people who have limited companies and going, ah, that's what I want. As I said in a previous video, you never want to be the CEO. You want to own the business, pay corporation tax, have a commercial defender, put the rear seats back into it, pay for an urban kit on it so it looks sick. Maybe you go to Khan and get a new interior and then your life basically becomes tax write-offs. Now, this is not financial advice. Past performance does not imply future performance. Definitely don't listen to anything that I said as advice. You live your own life. And what do I know? I'm just some idiot. But what I can tell you is please, whatever it is, you want in your life just go for it because in five ten years you are going to wish you had started then you really are i've got people who i've known for 10 years now coming up to me being like yeah so like what is it how how, how do you make money by the do you mind explaining to me how property works do you mind yeah. and the time's passed you're out of my life now those people who are now asking for advice were well, the people who are taking the mick being like oh chris stop being boring come to the pub why aren't you doing this oh we're going here why aren't you going there you've been a loser again oh stop working all the time fast forward to today and basically all i can do is hang around with people who are self-employed because well people who have nine to fives only are free on the weekends and when you're self-employed on a Monday afternoon, if you want to go get lunch with somebody, you can. And if you want to do this, debt-free living, escaping the nine to five, building a tiny house, watching how to build it with DIY is one thing, but creating a business and becoming self-employed, that is the most important thing. If you want to have proper debt-free living, financial freedom, location freedom, and time freedom, I can't stress that to you enough. So thanks for watching. I hope you've enjoyed this video. If you are new, please subscribe, like the video, do all that stuff. It really helps support the channel. In a bit.